this model introduces the exponential models for counts. Why the video is titled exponential models instead of just count data will become clear pretty soon. So uh, what are counts? Counts are uh, typically counts of events. How many times something happens like uh, if you go fishing how many uh, fish you get, how many times you catch a fish, uh, if you are uh, are running a company, how many times the company patents per year. So they are discrete numbers, whole numbers, and they are uh, strictly, they are zero or, or positive and they are non-negative. And uh, there is some confusion uh, around how you model count variables in the literature and uh, this article in Organizational Research Methods is, is one such example. So um, it's very commonly believed that if you have a variable that is count, then you have to use uh, some other model than normal regression analysis such as the Poisson regression analysis or negative binomial regression analysis. And uh, this article explains that the application of normal regression analysis would be inappropriate for data where the dependent variable is a count and if you use normal regression analysis for a count the results can be inefficient, inconsistent and biased. And uh, this statement is simply not true generally. There are cases where normal regression analysis shouldn't be used for counts, but uh, as a, a general statement that it's always wrong to use a normal regression analysis for counts, that is simply incorrect. How this statement is justified is uh, by giving two references to econometrics books. The problem is that these are big books and uh, there are no page numbers, so uh, we can't really check uh, whether these uh, sources support a claim without going through and reading the full book, which you can't assume your reader to do. So whenever you see statements that cite book, uh, books as evidence, uh, you should really uh, ask uh, the page number. So where exactly in that book does it say that regression analysis will be biased and inconsistent and inefficient if your dependent variable is a count. To understand um, why using counts it could be a problem or could not or, or is not the problem for regression analysis. Let's review the regression analysis assumption. So this is from Woolridge's book and regression analysis uh, assumes four different things for unbiasedness and consistency. So uh, we have a linear model, we have random sampling, no perfect collinearity and no endogeneity. If these are true, it, regression analysis is consistent and unbiased. There is nothing about not being a count variable here. There is in fact nothing about the distribution of the dependent variable at all. It's only about what's the expected value of the dependent variable or the mean given they are the observed independent variables. We start getting interested in uh, the distribution of the dependent variable when we have uh, the efficiency assumption. So when you have homoscedastic errors so that the variance of the error term doesn't uh, change with the, vari with the uh, explanatory variables, then regression analysis is also efficient. But again, there is there's no, should not be a count assumption. So using a regression analysis for counts is, is completely fine. So there is no problem with that. To demonstrate, uh, let's have an empirical demonstration. So we have a uh, dice here. We throw, uh, we have 30 sets of, of die throws and uh, we have the number of dice that were thrown and the number of sixes that we got. So the number of dice that were thrown and number of sixes that were got are the independent variable and the dependent variable in a simple regression analysis. We, we draw a regression line, number of die throws, the explanatory variables, number of sixes here. And it looks pretty good to me. So uh, regression line seems to go through the data. And in fact, uh, there is heteroscedasticity. So the variance here is greater than variance here. But other than that, regression analysis is fine. Just use uh, robust standard errors and this is going to be uh, the best, best way to model it. So what if, if we, what if we use uh, Poisson regression analysis that is commonly uh, recommended for counts? So uh, we use the Poisson model here, the coefficient 0.02 and for normal regression analysis, the coefficient is 0.17. So 0.17 is about one out of six which we know that we get uh, for each additional die throw, the uh, expected number of sixes increases by one out of six because that's the probability of getting uh, a six from a fair die. The, uh, the 0 0.02 is, uh, should be interpreted as a percentage increase. So relative to the current level of sixes, the, uh, the expected level of sixes increases by 2%. 
that doesn't really make, make any sense to think about our die throws that way. And if we plot the Poisson regression line here, it's actually a curve because Poisson is an exponential model. We can see that this exponential model doesn't really uh, explain the data at all because uh, when we have one throw, for example, it predicts that, uh, that we get uh, four sixes. That's impossible. And also that the number of sixes here are grows exponentially. It, it can't. At some point you hit the limit of how many times you throw. So uh, just the fact that our dependent variable is a count doesn't mean that we have, we can't use regression analysis and that we should use Poisson regression analysis or some variant of that technique. It, the important thing about the Poisson regression analysis is that it's an exponential model. So we're modeling the expected value of y as an exponential function and uh, this is the important part. When you have an exponential function then uh, the least squares is no longer an ideal technique. If you think that your count depends linearly and additively on your independent variables then uh, using, a count, using normal regression analysis is not problematic at all. In fact it's an ideal technique for that kind of analysis. So uh, in Poisson regression analysis, we are using an exponential function. And that's the reason why this video is not regression analysis for counts, but instead it's uh, exponential models for counts. So uh, what is the Poisson uh, distribution? It, it's a distribution of, of count of independent events that occur at a constant rate. So if you have uh, a rate of, uh, uh, let's say, 0.001 deaths per capita in a country, how many people die in a given year? Something like that. And um, what does the Poisson distribution look like? It's, it's a discrete distribution. So we have uh, discrete numbers. And uh, when we have, have, have small numbers, the expected value here is one. Then we typically get one, two or three and are getting uh, 20 is almost impossible. If we have a, a large value here, expected value is 9, then uh, there are the range of values that we can get ranges from about 3 to about 20 and that's still plausible to get. So uh, what we can see here is that um, the dispersion increases with the expected value and that's a feature of Poisson regression analysis. So normally when we uh, have uh, this expected value, this uh, expected value of 1, the variance is 1, expected value is 9, the variance is 9. So there are the variance and the mean of Poisson distribution are the same. Now coming back to our uh, example of die throws, this uh, distribution is, is an ideal distribution for modeling die throws. But we don't need to use Poisson regression analysis because, because that also includes the exponential function which we don't need. And uh, using the least squares estimation technique is, is uh, good enough regardless of the distribution of the dependent variables. So using a linear function with Poisson distribution would be unnecessary. Sometimes we, we, if, we, if we are uh, interested in uh, the actual predictions from the distribution and how they are distributed, then we could use that. But normally uh, the Poisson distribution is only required when we do nonlinear models. When we uh, go for larger values in the expected value, let's say we go from, uh, from 2, 4, 8 and so on to 512, so these are exponents of 2, we can see that the distribution approach is the normal distribution. So in, with large uh, numbers, uh, large expected values, the Poisson distribution approximates normal distribution. Whichever uh, do you use normal distribution or Poisson, then in uh, many cases doesn't make a difference if you can uh, have the, the, me, uh, the standard deviation of the normal distribution as a parameter as well. So um, they are roughly the same. So the distribution makes um, the most difference if your expected value is small. So this is distinctly non-normal as is that, but this is not as much. So uh, you apply the, the Poisson regression model when you think that uh, the, the uh, exponential model is the right model for your data. So you're expecting that uh, the effects are relative to the current level and they're multiplicative together. And you interpret these um, results the same way as you would results 
when your dependent variable is log transform. The expected are the number that you are you explain is the expected number of events. One thing that's uh, very common in studies that apply these techniques is that uh, if we study for example how many people die in each country and we look at European countries, the European countries are quite different size from one another. Finland has uh, with five or six million people and Germany has like a hundred million people or so. So uh, we have to take that into account somehow because we can't really compare uh, the rate and uh, the number of deaths in Finland and number of deaths in Germany unless we somehow standardize the data. Quite often we, we are looking at uh, we want to understand the rate at, at which something happens instead of the count. And uh, to do that we use the exposure and offsets. For example the number of deaths due to cancer per population or the number of, of uh, citations per article in, in a journal. They are the population here and the article here are what we call exposure. So this is like uh, the, the total amount of, uh, of units or whatever at risk that could uh, have the event occurring at them. One thing that we could try if we don't think it through is just to, uh, to divide the uh, num number of deaths per population but that's, uh, that's highly problematic for reasons uh, explained in this article. So using the rate itself is, is a bad idea and also the Poisson regression analysis and the variance of that technique are very useful because there's a nice trick that we can apply. So we, uh, when we uh, want to model the, the rate instead of model the actual count of deaths or counts of, of citations, we want to estimate this kind of article. So we will look at uh, the expectation are here multiplied by the exposure. So we are interested in that kind of model. And uh, so this gives us the rate of events and we multiply it with the size of our unit and that will give the actual count of events. We can apply a little bit of math and uh, move this exposure inside the exponential function by taking a logarithm and then adding it to the uh, linear predictor. And uh, this uh, taking a logarithm and including the variable inside the regression model without the regression coefficient or regression coefficient con constraint to be one is called an offset. So we are basically uh, adding a, a constant number to the, the fitted value that's uh, calculated based on our observation. So using an offset is something that your, your statistical software will do it that for you. So you just specify one variable as an offset and how it works is that the statistical software takes a logarithm of that value, adds it to the regression function, but instead of estimating a regression coefficient, it constrains the effect to be one. And then that allows you to uh, interpret these effects as, as rates instead of as total counts. And that's very useful. I've used that myself in, in one article that I'm, I'm working on. Then we have uh, another variant of the Poisson regression model. So the Poisson regression model, Poisson distribution assumes that the variance of, the, of the, uh, the distribution of the dependent variable is the same as the expected value for a given observation. So the Poisson makes the uh, variance assumption that the variance equals mean. We can relax that assumption by uh, saying that the variance equals alpha times the mean and uh, that will give us a uh, negative binomial regression analysis. So if alpha is greater than one then uh, we are saying that our, our data are over this first and that's when negative binomial regression analysis could be used. If alpha is less than one so the variance of the dependent variable is, is less than the mean then uh, they are under dispersed. So here's an example. So this is uh, the Poisson distribution. Expectation is one, two and uh, three. So these are powers of two I think or something like that. And then alpha is two, two, two and uh, three. So we can see that uh, the, uh, the expectation stays the same but the variance increases. So when we say here that the, the over this person here is, uh, is three, so uh, the variance is three times the mean. So the mean is at, at uh, about three or something and this is the, uh, the variance is a lot greater. 
negative binomial recursion analysis is commonly used for these scenarios. But uh, the choice between negative binomial and, and Poisson analysis is, is not as straightforward as looking at the amount of dispersion. So, so which of these techniques, they are commonly, the common, tech, the common way of uh, choosing between these, these techniques is to, uh, to fit both and then uh, check which one fits the data better using likelihood ratio test. But there is there's more to that decision than just comparing which one of these fits the data better. So um, whether you use Poisson or negative binomial depends on, on a couple of things and you have to understand the consequences of that decision. So uh, typically when you choose uh, an analysis technique over another you have a specific reason to do so. So uh, using the Poisson regression analysis over negative binomial regression analysis when we know that the distribution of the dependent variable is, is uh, Poisson then uh, the reason to use Poisson regression analysis is that it is more efficient than negative binomial which is consistent but inefficient in this scenario. When there is over this person there are it goes the other way so uh, Poisson is consistent but it is inefficient a negative binomial is consistent but efficient. Then uh, standard errors can be inconsistent for Poisson depending on which of the very uh, available equations you apply because there are multiple and you have to consult your statistical software's user manual to, show, uh, to know which one is applied. I most likely at least in data you're using the, uh, the equation that is uh, consistent even under over this person. Then we have under this, this person and uh, Poisson regression is consistent, inefficient and standard errors may be in, in, inconsistent. Negative binomial is inconsistent so the estimates will be incorrect in large samples and that's really bad. Okay so this uh, covers the three scenarios when the dependent variable uh, is distributed like Poisson random variable but it could be over dispersed. It's also possible that you have counts that don't look like Poisson distribution at, at all. And in that case, uh, Poisson regression analysis is consistent, standard errors are inconsistent, and negative binomial regression is inconsistent. So uh, what do we make of it? Uh, in some scenarios, negative binomial is more efficient than Poisson. In others, it's less efficient than Poisson, but generally we want our estimates to be consistent so that uh, we, we may uh, have a bit of inefficiency, but the trade-off of, of getting a, an efficient estimator that could be inconsistent, that's, uh, that's not worth making. So you want to have something that is robust and if your sample size is large, then uh, efficiency differences don't make much difference. So using Poisson regression analysis is a safe choice if you don't know what you're doing. If you have a specific reason to believe that your uh, dependent variable is distributed as negative binomial conditional on, the, on the, uh, the fitted values, then you can use negative binomial. But using Poisson is a safer option. This is uh, not something that is current practice, but that's what the methodological literature suggests. We have also some extensions to these models. Uh, zero inflated models is one. So the idea of zero inflated models is that sometimes uh, you have these, these structural zeros, we call them in, in the sample or in the population. And uh, status user manual gives uh, this example of uh, a person going fishing or people going fishing to a natural park. And uh, the number of fish that they catch is not distributed as Poisson because some people choose not to fish. So people are get zeros if they choose not to fish and they get zeros if they choose to fish but they uh, don't get any. So uh, the amount of fish that you get is probably uh, independent events probably are distributed very close to Poisson depending on, on the weather and, and uh, season and maybe your fishing gear and skills but uh, given the, the time and given the person this is uh, most likely very close to Poisson except for those people who, who decide not to fish that will get zeros. They are, this is called a zero inflation scenario. And how we handle the zero inflation is that we estimate our two models. So we estimate our some kind of SQR model, typically logistic regression analysis for structural zeros. So this is the, uh, the idea of, of modeling whether a person decides to fish or not. 
And then we have exponential count models such as the Poisson model for, for the number of fishes or we could have a linear regression model as well if we think that the linear model is better for the data than the exponential model. So we estimate two models at the same time and these two models give us the likelihood that we maximize. It's important that uh, we report both models and interpret both models when we report the results. Because it could be interesting what defines uh, the structural zeros and if that's very different from the actual uh, n zeros that occur from the actual process or the, the, uh, the non-zero values. Then we have another commonly uh, or, or a bit less commonly used but still sometimes used variant of these models called the hurdle model which is uh, similar to the uh, zero inflation model. But in this case, uh, instead of looking at uh, the people who don't fish at all, we, uh, we look at the difference between people who, who get one and people who get one or more. The example here is, the typical example is, is going to see a doctor. So how many times you go and see a doctor, it probably, the, the time, the first time you go to a doctor depends on different things than uh, whether you go there uh, the second and third and fourth time. For example, whether you go to see a doctor the second time probably depends on a, a lot on what the doctor tells you. And uh, whether you decide to go and see a doctor in the first place can't depend on what the doctor tells you because you haven't seen the doctor. And uh, we model this kind of uh, processes using the hurdle model. The idea is that we have two models. We have again S-curve model for zero and non-zero. And then we have uh, a truncated version of exponential count model for the actual count. So uh, we model first, does the person go to a doctor? And uh, then we model, given that the person went to a doctor at least once, how many times does the person go to a doctor? Again, uh, you get two sets of results for two models, then you should integrate both and report them. Let's take a look at an example. So this is from the same uh, example from the Blevins paper. They don't uh, interpret the zero inflation model, but, uh, but they present Poisson regression, negative binomial regression, zero inflated Poisson and zero inflated negative binomial. We're going to be looking at uh, the likelihoods and the decrease of freedom, or uh, this is not actually a decrease of freedom, but it's, it's uh, the number of parameters instead, which is uh, incorrectly reported as decrease of freedom. So. Um, the, the decrease of freedom difference between a uh, negative binomial model and basic Poisson model is, is one. The one difference is that these estimate the same model, so the regression coefficients are the same, but the negative binomial regression model here estimates the amount of over dispersion in the Poisson distribution that we fit to the data. When we go from, from basic Poisson model to the zero inflated Poisson model, we can see that the number of parameters is, is twice as the Poisson model. The reason for that is that we have actually two models. So we have one model uh, explaining the structural zeros, then there are the S-curve model, and then we have uh, the, the normal Poisson regression model. The negative binomial results and, ba and Poisson results are typically very close to one another because they are uh, Negative uh, Poisson is consistent on, uh, under uh, the negative binomial assumptions. So if, some, if sample size is large, then they should be very similar. The zero inflated model results and, and the, uh, the negative binomial Poisson results are typically quite different. And here we can see again the, uh, the one degree of freedom difference. How we choose uh, between negative binomial and Poisson is uh, the convention is that you do uh, a likelihood ratio test so you compare the likelihood of uh, the log likelihood of the Poisson against the log likelihood of the negative binomial. We can see that there is a uh, uh, 400 difference with one degree of freedom difference that is highly statistically significant. So the negative binomial here is a uh, much better fit for the data than the basic Poisson model. The, the reason why negative binomial almost always fits better than the basic Poisson is that the, the Poisson model assumes that all the independent variables in the model explain the, uh, the dependent, uh, explain the mean perfectly. So there is uh, there is no uh, only variation around the mean is uh, variation that belongs to the, uh, the the error term or however we like to call the Poisson distribution. 
in practice our models are imperfect. So there's always uh, some variables that we could have observed but did not that would explain the dependent variable. And if those explain the dependent variable to a substantial degree, then uh, that additional variation that could have been explained but we didn't goes to the error term. So it's the same thing as in a regression analysis. So if, if your uh, R square is 20 percent, then 80 percent of the variation is, is unexplained. If you add more variables, R square increases to 50 percent and then the error variance decreases. So the same thing happens here. There are negative binomial model if it fits better than the basic Poisson model, then it means that our, our model is, is incomplete in explaining the data completely. That's uh, not a problem as soon as uh, any of the omitted causes are uncorrelated with explanatory variables and don't lead to an endogeneity problem. But that's something to, uh, to be aware of. Finally, there are quite often you see this kind of diagrams on what to do. And uh, this is again a convention how we choose between negative binomial and uh, Poisson model. There is no problem in using Poisson model for all of this first data as long as you adjust the standard errors accordingly. So there are, but, but, but the current convention is that uh, you do both models and uh, then you do a likelihood ratio test between the Poisson model and the negative binomial model. If the negative binomial model fits significantly better, that's evidence for over this person and then you go for the negative binomial model. Then uh, these articles suggest that you look at whether there is uh, excess zeros. If there is excess zeros, then uh, you do a one test and based on that you, you either choose negative binomial model or uh, zero inflated negative binomial model. The uh, problem with this approach is that the one test is problematic and uh, also, you should not be doing modeling decisions based on empirical uh, results only. There are the zero inflation, it's, it's a hypothesis that has a theoretical interpretation. It's a, if you use zero inflation model, then you are making a hypothesis that your model is actually, your data are actually results of two different processes. A process that generates zeros, people who never uh, uh, go fishing will never get fish. And, uh, so you have a theoretical guidance that you can usually use to choose whether uh, you use a zero inflation or not. So is there a plausible mechanism for the zeros? Then you apply zero inflation. Otherwise you apply a uh, Poisson regression analysis because the zero inflation uh, is actually not a violation of the Poisson regression assumptions.